Okay, hello everybody. I'm not going to say good morning or good afternoon, so I don't know in which time zone you are. Uh, but my name is Esan Delu. I'm the component leader of the Effective uh, Genetic Resource Conservation and Use uh, Initiative. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about the in situ conservation of crop wire relatives in the SADC region. Uh, here on this slide, you will see uh, or the project team that has been working on this project. So I'm not going to name all of them, but this is just the project team from several partners from the University of Birmingham, from the three partners countries from South Africa, Zambia, and Mauritius. So in this presentation, um, first of all, would like to set the scene a bit, set the context for crop war relative work that we've been doing in biodiversity uh, and has been discussed in the biodiversity strategy. Then to give you an overview of some of the crop wire related work that has been done in biodiversity. And then the bulk of the presentation will be presenting the SADAC crop wire related project in terms of an overview of it and some producing some of the key results. And then I will conclude with some conclusions. As many of you would know, crop wire relatives are wild plant species that are closely related to crops and very often they include also the wild uh, uh, ancestors of, of our crops that we cultivate today. Now crop wire relatives are in because they have been the foundation of agriculture ever since the origin of agriculture. They provide the genes for crop improvement, for example. Uh, a recent study has shown that crop wire relative has an important role to play in agriculture. In economics term, they contribute to about 120 billion US dollar towards increased crop yield per year. So, which, which means that crop varieties is a very important resource for agriculture. They also help to fight against pests and diseases in terms of providing resistant genes for uh, pests and diseases resistance, for um, environmental stresses, and this in a way help to reduce uh, the use of pesticides inputs and also help uh, in terms of restoring land degradation because these crop relatives are much more adapted to those type of conditions. Now since they are also wild species, they continue to evolve with nature, they continue to evolve with changing climate and very often because of that they are a source of adapted traits that can be helpful to mitigate climate change impacts and therefore contribute to maintain future food security. Nevertheless, despite their importance, crop worry any challenges. Um, in terms of climate change itself, they are affected by climate change as well as by other uh, as well as other wild species. Um, like other wild species, they are threatened also by the loss, by the degradation and fragmentation of their natural habitats, often caused by anthropogenic uh, changes. And particularly also in many countries, particularly in small islands, they are very much affected by competing invasive or what we call alien species. Crop wire relatives, because they are found on disturbed habitats, often in field margin or forest edges and roadsides, are difficult to conserve because these are habitats that are not normally taken into account by any conservation agencies. They are just lying in the, uh, land that are unoccupied and no man's land essentially, so they are very difficult to conserve in those spaces. Now, 
In terms of what crop wall relatives mean for biodiversity, uh, in our thematic strat strategy on in situ conservation, uh, we have sort of defined some of the objectives in relevance to our work on crop wall relatives. Our main objectives there are to try and support and enable the effective and efficient in situ conservation and use of priority crop war relatives in terms of de developing strategies, both at local, national and at the global level. We wish also to determine the conservation status of those crop war relatives and what threatens them and how do we develop long-term indicators and risk threshold level that will allow us to monitor the changes of those uh, crop war relative species. Our objective is also to develop management approaches to try and conserve uh, crop war relatives in priority sites in the most cost-effective manner. And finally, we want to link this conservation with use in terms of identifying those important traits, these important adaptive traits, uh, where they are, how they are, and how they can be used uh, for use of those traits in uh, crop breeding program or by, by farmers themselves. Now this slide shows a little bit some of the work that Bioversity has been doing in the, in the past. So one of the first activities that Bioversity has been involved in is a series of projects which has been uh, funded by the UNGF project for example, the in situ conservation of crop war relatives through enhanced information management and field application, uh, which was um, done, I think, in the um, year 2004 to 2009. Uh, a second project was the UNEP Jeff project on tropical fruit trees that was managed by, by Buon. Uh, in a number of countries in South and Southeast Asia. We also had another important uh, project on in situ on farm conservation of agricultural biodiversity in Central Asia, in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. And a lot of that, both the Tropical Fruit Tree Project and the Central Asia Project also had a major component on the wild relatives of those temperate and tropical fruit trees. Now since the 1990s there has been a series of uh, um, EU funded projects with a specific aim on crop wild relatives. The first was called PGR Forum um, which was, uh, I think it was in the 2000, where it was established uh, particularly to develop methodologies for the conservations of crop war relatives. So these were part of the framework six and seven of the EU projects. A second project which Biovesti itself did not participate but that we followed very closely and helped to support was the ECRO project where the focus here was on looking at the conservation management in protected areas and as a result uh, of this there has been a book that has been published on agro agricultural biodiversity uh, and for crop war relatives uh, more precisely. And then more recently we had a project on PGR Secure and here in this project it was focusing on the link between conservation and use and how traits can be used in, in breeding and as a result of this there was a book which has been published by Capri which was produced as a result of that project. And the last project in which is still ongoing at the moment which is funded through uh, the EU and uh, ACP which is the Asia Pacific 
yeah, Afri sorry, Africa, Caribbean and Pacific um, countries, member states, uh, focuses on the in situ conservation and use of crop war relative in free countries of the SADAC region. And I'm going to talk a little bit more on those projects now. So the project, what the short is a SADAC crop war relative project is a project, as I said, is uh, co-funded by the EU, you know, European Union and implemented through the ACP EU Cooperation Program in Science and Technology by the ACP Group of States. It is a project which is uh, being held uh, across the SADC region but more focused on three countries uh, which includes uh, Mauritius, uh, South Africa and Zambia. Uh, our partner in this project also include uh, the University of Birmingham which provides a technical backstopping to the three countries and the partners in each of these countries are the University of Mauritius, representing Mauritius, Zambia Agricultural Research Institute in Zambia and the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and fisheries in South Africa. The main overall objective of this project is to enhance the link between conservation and use of crop war relatives in these free ACP countries within the SADC region as a means of underpinning regional food security and mitigating the predicted adverse impact of climate change. So what are we doing in this project? more precisely is that we have undertaken a number of uh, training workshops to enhance the scientific capacities of our partner countries, both in terms of uh, in situ conservation of crop war relative, but also uh, giving them the skills necessary for identifying traits within those wild populations. And the second output uh, um, uh, objective is to develop exemplar strategic national strategic action plans as a means uh, for for other countries uh, in within the SADC or outside the SADC region to use. So those strategic action plans are for obviously for the conservation and use of crop war relatives in the face of the challenges of climate change across the SADC region. So as I said, one of the first uh, set of activities has been to develop a training needs assessment and to organize a, two training workshops, one of which was held in Mauritius in, on in situ conservation and biodiversity assessment and the second workshop was held in South Africa uh, on predictive characterization and pre-breeding was hosted by the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries in South Africa. So the aim of that is to assess and improve the capacity of the in-situ conservation and use of the partner countries. Um, Bioversity as well as University of Birmingham has been providing in addition to the training workshop a technical backstopping in terms of visit to the countries, face-to-face -face meeting with them but also through Skype and GoToMeeting provide regular support to the countries in undertaking the various activities in the project. For this we have also, uh, as I said, one of the major output would be to produce a national strategic action plan. We've been producing templates for them to organize the data, to analyze the data, but also a template for uh, developing their national strategic action plan as well. Now, in addition to this, uh, particularly led by University of Birmingham, we have been developing an online toolkit uh, which will help uh, to support conservation planning. So this toolkit uh, is going to be uh, hosted on our crop war relative uh, portal here in Biodiversity. So it's, it's been done as an interactive toolkit. 
um, <coughs> and we'll we'll take the uh, people want wishing to develop a national strategy to go through the whole process on what needs to be done. So all the various steps in terms of developing uh, the strategy is given in this uh, toolkit. Uh, the toolkit is also interactive and is very much based on the resource book for the preparation of national plans for conservation of crop wild relatives and land races. And this was a resource book that was initially commissioned by the FAO Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. And so this toolkit will help the countries to prepare national strategic action plans. Right. So here, just to give you an overview of what has happened in the project, I mean, the first step has been to develop uh, a checklist of crop wire relatives in the three countries. Uh, and from that checklist, uh, each country uh, has prioritized some of the crop wire relatives using a set of criteria. Essentially, uh, in each of the countries, the criteria that has been used is to look at the economic importance of that crop wire relatives is to look at their relative distribution within the country in terms of whether they are endemic or, or not, uh, is to look also at the threat of those crop varieties. So these were the three main criteria that was used in the three countries, but each country used these criteria slightly differently. Uh, but by and large, these were the main criteria that was used there. So as a result of this prioritization process, um, Mauritius uh, identified uh, a total of 23 priority species. Uh, Mauritius have two main inhabited islands, Mauritius and Rodrigue, so the prioritization was done on both islands separately there. In South Africa, they prioritized 292 uh, taxa, uh, species of crop wire relatives. And in Zambia, they limited it to the top uh, 30 taxa of crop wire relatives. So, so in the bottom of the slide, you can see some of the various crop wire relatives that were identified. The next slide will show you a little bit more about those. So in Mauritius, uh, the main crop varieties were coffee, figs, uh, olives, and fonio. In South Africa, it was sweet potato, eggplant, rooibos tea, and millets. In Zambia, there were cowpea, rice, yam, and cucumbers, and melons. So these just to give you a flavor of some of the priority crop varieties that were grown there. Right, as I said, the objective of the project is to develop exemplar national strategic action plan. So what we expect out of this is that each country would have identified uh, a set of crop wire relative sites that would maximize the in situ genetic diversity conservation of their national and hopefully global priority crop wire relatives. So the focus there has been looking at crop gene pools within the global range using, sorry, this was meant for looking at a global strategy, but we adapted that at the national level to define within each region which are the, the key populations that represented the highest diversity, and we did that by using certain gap analysis and diversity and hotspots analysis to identify those sites. And uh, the last objective was to manage this uh, uh, network of crop war relative sites as a coherent role uh, to maximize the efficiency and sustainability at the country level. So I said this is the process in which we develop the National Strategic Action Plan by compiling all the baseline uh, information, by identifying the hotspots and priority sites. 
and we also looked at uh, predicting which in situ population and materials that came from ex situ uh, collections that have traits adapted to climate change conditions in terms of predictive characterization and finally to bring all this information together to develop the National Strategic Action Plan. Right. In addition to this, we've also did a regional analysis across the whole SADC region. That's not in the free countries, but for the whole region. So that work was undertaken by Biodiversity and the University of Birmingham, where again we looked at uh, uh, the major food and crop groups, um, which were also in, at, in, in which is held in the FAO databases. We also look at information that came from the SADAC Plant Genetic Resources Center based collection uh, and other databases that are found in the region. Based on that, a total of 91 crops group were chosen and from there we've identified 731 crop war related species which were related to 75 of these crop groups that occur in the uh, SADC region. So that was a regional assessment that we've done across the war region and we hope now in time to work with the SADC Plant Genetic Resource Network to develop now a regional conservation and new strategy for crop oil relatives. Dealt with also is to ensure in the projects that we are involving the stakeholders. If we want uh, the National Strategic Action Plan to be endorsed and used and implemented, it really requires a strong support at the policy level. So we've really gone out of the way to make sure that all the stakeholders at the countries were involved in the NSAP preparation, in the National Strategic Action Plan preparation, right from the start at the initial phases of its development and its validation. So even before we started to draft the NSAP, we had workshops organized at national level to involve stakeholders, to inform them of the process and to get the ideas of what need to be included in the NSAP. So that's how the, the work was started. We also to get buy-in we have worked very closely with decision makers at the highest level to ensure uh, that the process by which the NSAP were going to be endorsed is well laid out, is made clear to all of us so that we would then ensure that this will be taken up by government. We have also raised awareness of the project and given it high profile at major international conferences and meetings. For example, we have organized side events at the 15th regular session of the FAO Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture in January 2015, as well as the sixth governing body of the International Treaty uh, last year uh, in October uh, in Rome. Now, the results of the project will also be published online. Uh, we have uh, produced uh, leaflets and blogs on social media and we hope also to come up with a series of scientific publication by each of our country partners but also for the regional analysis and we're also going to present a lot of the results of the work at the upcoming International Agrobiodiversity Conference, which is being co-organized by Biodiversity and uh, ICA and other uh, stakeholders in India, which will be held in Delhi in November. Further, we are developing also links with FAO and the CBD, and the project is now really being used as a model for in-situ conservation in many 
uh, parts of the world. So, in conclusion, uh, the project has really contributed by strengthening the capacities on in situ conservation and use of crop relative in the SADC region. We have trained over 50 participants from the SADC uh, member state through the different work, workshops that we have done. We have produced uh, an interactive toolkit for the conservation of crop war relative. This is in the process of being published and will be shared by this. We have prepared detailed checklists and inventory of crop war relative in each of the partner countries as well as in the SADC region. Hotspots of priority crop priorities has been identified in each of the countries and the SADAC region as well for in situ conservation interventions and we hope that countries will take measures now to establish those sites as protected areas and these has been done obviously uh, using scientifically sound methodologies based on diversity and hotspots analysis. So major outcome of that is that we would have a free national strategic action plan which would have been established and this would contribute to a regional and also a global network of crop war relative important sites in the region and globally. So that's my presentation just to give you an overview of what that project was about. So thank you very much for your attention uh, and look forward for your questions and discussion on this uh, at the virtual science week. Thank you very much.